XPO Logistics is seeing a rebound in demand for its truck services following a temporary shutdown of entire industries that, of course, hurt transportation demand back in the second quarter. Uh, it's one of the top 10 transportation logistics service providers in the world. Its CEO is Brad Jacobs, and he joins us now. Brad, I have to ask, uh, we're watching Washington. Uh, we're all on tent hooks. We're trying to figure out exactly what happens if we don't get another stimulus package out of D.C., what would that mean for your business? How important is government stimulus right now to keeping the U.S. economy going? Well, it would certainly help, but it's not the end of the world if it doesn't go through. Uh, we just had a quarter where there was some modest stimulus, but it, we generated a free cash flow of $121 million. And we saw in each month during the quarter sequential improvements. So the, the trend is positive. Oh, what kind of stuff? Walk us through sort of what was moving. So the biggest uh, demand we had was in our last mile business, where we had 3% uh, organic revenue growth year over year. So that's we're the largest provider of last mile logistics for heavy goods in North America. So when you're buying a, a washing machine or a, a television or a, an exercise equipment or home improvement, we're more likely not to be arranging the delivery of that. And that business was was up quite a bit this quarter. Do you think that continues, though? I, we're, we're looking at this yeah, $600, people, and we're do, trying to I understand do. whether I or not if that will, disappears. I think, yeah. I, I think, yes. I, I think people will still be indoors for a while, and they will be improving their homes and apartments, and they will be exercising. And I think there'll be more... Uh, demand for that. I think that's a trend. And by the way, everything e-com related in our business was on fire during the quarter. It's not the majority of our business, but it's our biggest vertical. So e-com in, in Europe, where we have the largest e-fulfillment platform, e-com here, where we have omni-channel logistics, we have huge reverse logistics, returns business. That business has gone up quite quite a bit. Well, that gives us some really good insight because something that we talk a lot about here uh, on Bloomberg Television is the difference between how Europe and the U.S. dealt with the virus in terms of its stimulus and support of workers and how it positions both of those countries differently uh, cutting out, coming out of the pandemic. Are you noticing that divergence uh, on the ground in logistics? 100 percent. So our European business is far ahead of our North American business. The recovery, well, they started earlier than us, but they also had strict na nationwide lockdowns. So they're, they're almost recovered, not fully recovered, but they're almost recovered. We have some parts of our European business that is actually higher than it was a year ago. Uh, here in the States, we do see the beginnings of recovery, but it's spotty and it's, it's not anything compared to Europe. Do you think that trend continues? Again, I, I, I'm wondering what becomes permanent here as a result of what we're seeing in COVID-19. Well, a lot of that depends on behavior. So there, there's, there, there's things that we can control in terms of how we react to the virus. And I'm very encouraged that the conversion rate from getting sick with this awful disease and actually dying is going down. So the therapeutics is, is fantastic. I mean. God forbid you get COVID, but you're much better off getting it now than you were a, a few months ago. And the vaccines are on the horizon. Uh, I was on a call with the CEOs of the big pharma companies the other day, and they're all working at lightning speed to have uh, vaccines within a few months. Now, we've got to get everyone to take the vaccine, which is which is the net, will be the next stumbling block after that. Uh, so what role will you play in the distribution of vaccines? Am I... Uh interpretations if you're on a call with them you're going to be part of that we, we will play a role in the logistics part in the distribution in the warehousing and in the distribution of it to get it from here to there because that's what we do alex we're a company that moves things from a to b in the most efficient way and we have 800 warehouses in the midst of all that supply chain to make it more efficient and everything that's going on in e-commerce we're facilitating Everything that well, the main thing that's driving our growth, Alex, is the outsourcing trends. So companies more and more are throwing their hands up and saying, "Look, we need to outsource our transportation, our supply chain needs to someone who does this full time for a living." Companies like XPL Logistics, and that's been driving the, the growth of the industry, and it will continue to drive the growth of the industry in the coming years. 
Brad, can I just back you up to that call a little bit uh, you had with the pharmaceutical CEOs? What are they telling you about kind of the timelines that they're working to in terms of delivering the vaccine? What kind of messages are they giving you about when you, your services will be required in order to get this out to the population? Well, they're very, very proud of something that usually takes about 10 years <laughs> is going to roll out within a year. So the, the, the speed of developing and testing and making sure the vaccines are safe and then manufacturing billions and billions of dosages is a monumental project. It may be the biggest project that humankind has ever worked on. Mm -hmm. And they're saying that they'll have hundreds of millions of dosages in the next several months and that they'll have, each one of them will have over a billion dosages next year. So to vaccinate 7 billion people on the planet and, and some will need more than one vaccine, that's in sight. But I don't think that's gonna be done within three, six, nine months. I personally think that's a second half next year event. But you know, I've been surprised to the upside with the speed with which they've been working on this. Uh, well, one more question on, on this portion. Um, when we hear from drug manufacturers, what they say is that the manufacturing process, like the little glass vials, is what they're missing. What are your hurdles in the product distribution? And if you have a lead time of, say, nine months, how quickly can you sort of fix it? I think the logistics, while, while huge and complex and daunting, we can handle that. The main thing, that the main gating factor is making sure the vaccines are safe. So they're all doing trial tests now. They take... 30, 40,000 um, uh, patients, and they give half of them the real, uh, the real deal, and they give half of them a placebo, and they don't tell who is getting which. And they're doing this in places where uh, there's a lot of COVID activity. And then they'll see pretty quickly what the rates are between the placebo and the actual vaccine. And they'll see very soon, within months, which ones work and which ones don't. So I'm optimistic about the vaccines. I just think we have to be realistic about the time it takes to get all that done. I, I don't think it's going to be a few months. I, I do think it's going to be roughly 9 to 15 months.